Okay. Let's go on to the second section of my lecture on uncovering the missing secrets of magnetism. This will be on what magnetism is not. Uh, a really short conclusion based upon the evidence of what uh, current magnetism is uh, explained as, which of course is both amusing and rather frightful. Um, there's an interesting ancient Greek word. This word is uh, koros, a uh, word for field. You ever want to uh, stump a modern uh, PhD, a doctoral physicist, just ask them to define a field in itself, of itself, by itself. We'll always stump them because they haven't got a single explanation. Um, let's get into it, and uh, after the second edition, we'll go in directly into magnetism. What defines a magnet, lines of force, uh, polarity, and what defines magnetism? And uh, understand this conjugate magnetodielectric uh, field geometry that uh, has perplexed mankind since uh, the beginning of time when they found lodestones. I've been using them for thousands of years, mostly for ship navigation, but also for uh, rich children's amusement as well as adults. And uh, we have uh, all this uh, crusty and uh, nonsense actually stacked up upon what we think magnetism is or is not, and this notion of magnetic attraction, which of course is an absolute absurdity. But this is due to the uh, inherent deficiency of human sensory input. We th see two things accelerate towards one another, then we think attraction. So we've uh, had thousands of years of magnetic attraction and notions of polarity in our head, and uh, all of this is an absolute absurdity, and it's not understanding what magnetism is, nor its relationship to the dielectric. Uh, let's get started. Maxwellian field equations, be it Gauss, Coulomb, Faraday, or Ampere, define fields only over a given vector, time, magnetic permeability, and dielectric permittivity, also called the electrical constant. These are changes measured in effect. They never define a field in itself of itself. Particle fantasies, the deformed and mentally inept machinations of the cult of quantum, or as I call it, the cult of bumping particles, cannot be enjoined by rational or intelligent minds. These are the same intellectual insanities of reifying space as something that did things or acted upon things. These are the remnants of Einstein, for which Tesla called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot. Tesla also railed heavily against the notion that space had any properties. Space has absolutely no properties, nor does it act upon things. He, of course, did uh, denote the fact that space has attributes, but it has no properties, nor is it a principle, just as a shadow was not a thing. A shadow was a privation of light. We have uh, countless concepts within human conception, such as space and time and uh, shadows and emptiness and chaos. These are uh, pathetic human conceptualizations which do not exist in the cosmic mechanics toolbox of Mother Nature, if you will. Fields have no quantity that the realm of physics has co-opted uh, the definition of fields as an absurdity. The quantified effects of cause and effect interactions measured in either joules or watts or amperes is denotative and descriptive, none of which explains what a field is, nor magnetism specifically. Quantum mechanics has utterly co-opted the definition of magnetism along with the source of quantum's religion, that being light. But quantum is atomistic. Its very foundation is built upon the wave-particle duality, of which light is certainly not a particle, and a wave is absolutely not a thing, but what a thing does. This is the premise of Mother Nature according to GR and QM, respectively in general relativity and quantum mechanics. Virtual particles, warp space and sanity, negative momentum particles, gravitons, quarks, gluons, you know, big bang, black holes, uh, absurd definitions thereof. Uh, space, of course a black hole is neither black nor is it a hole. Space, which is neither a force nor field acting upon things. Mother Nature, according to general relativity and quantum mechanics, is a uh, cross-eyed cooker, cross-eyed hooker or on crack. And I do mean that literally. It's completely illogical. Um, a field is completely... Now, this is a quote from Charles Brody Steinmetz. Well, I like Steinmetz greatly. He does say some rather absurd stuff in his voluminous writings. And this is, of course, the same sort of uh, illogical and insane nonsense we see today. So this is from uh, Steinmetz. A field is completely defined at any point by its intensity and direction. Well, Mr. Steinmetz, intensity and directions are properties and attributes. They're not explanations or even complete descriptions. 
This is another one from Steinmetz. We get to find a field as a condition of energy storage in space, energy storage in space, exerting a force on a body susceptible to this energy. Well, space has no properties, and a condition is not a thing, but an attribute something has, like saying, my condition is I have the flu, further still exerting a force. A force of what, upon what, and by what. This is the uh, premise of general relativity and quantum mechanics. This is their own definition. The magnetic field between magnetic dipoles, it is caused by the exchange of virtual photons. Really? Isn't that interesting? You know, these are not the inputs or outputs of experiments, by the way. This is uh, from Maxwell. This is an accurate statement. This medium of propagation, the ether, must exist. The medium must be a prominent thought in our investigations. This is from his book, Treaties on Electricity and Magnetism. It is the case, and this is absolutely undeniably so, when you remove the ether, you must necessitatively replace it with particle fantasies and messenger particles for interactions, especially actions at a distance. These absurd mental constructs are not the inputs or outputs of any experiment ever done, as I've already said. See, here's an insane definition from uh, Tom's, uh, to uh, Tony Skirme, and uh, this is another particle fantasy to define magnetism. Such skirmions are quasi-particles. They do not exist in the absence of a magnetic field. So here's another unicorn particle. Once again, this is not part of any experimental input or output. It's just, it is literally a brain fart like unicorns or leprechauns. And these people are PhD doctoral uh, folks within uh, universities and uh, yeah, teaching, teaching children, teaching, well, high school kids, I mean college kids. These, this, this is their position, by the way. This is from Walter Russell. Nothing is more fantastical and a travesty of how nature works than is quantum theory. Its very basis has no relationship whatsoever to reality. Most so-called so scientists today are not scientists, rather mathematicians, and fundamentally, if it can't be quantified and counted by a mathematician, then it doesn't really exist in their eyes. This is from Nikola Tesla. There's a great one, a quote from uh, Richard Feynman, or Tricky Dicky. All literature on this subject, reality and curved space-time, is futile and destined to oblivion. Nikola Tesla. Here's a quote from uh, Tricky Dicky Richard Feynman. Now, I have his books, by the way. This guy had a million charisma points, and he was an insane idiot. Absolutely insane. He, everybody loved him because he had a great personality, and he played the ukulele, and... The drums, and you know, he was just, man, college kids loved this dude because he was hip, but he was also a moron. This is his own uh, statement. Anyone who claims to understand quantum theory is either lying or crazy. Well, that's a brilliant statement. I'm glad he could be so up forthright. This is also from his book, QED Strange Theory of Light and Matter by Richard Feynman. A virtual, this is a really good one too. A virtual particle is an abstraction which facilitates in calculations and understanding. The term is very vague and loosely defined. They never appear as inputs or outputs of experiments done. Their existence is questionable at best. However, they are very useful in rendering concepts and making equations balance out. Well, isn't that interesting? That sounds like something uh, straight out of the padded room section of your local mental ward. Now, this is a really good one. This is the official priest of the cult of quantum, Ph.D. doctoral professor of theoretical physics, Leonard Susskind. This, this is a real quote. When common sense and intuition fails, we had to create a new form of intuition based upon abstract mathematics. When common sense fails, we must create uncommon sense. Well, isn't that nice? Isn't that lovely? That's, that, just, that just seems so lovely. This is a good one. Here's the idiot at work. This is the premise of general relativity. Yeah, magic, virtual, invisible virtual particles. That's how we do instantaneous action. That's, what, uh, that's what's going on with magnetism there. No. No, this is a postulation based upon no science nor any experiment. By their own admission, this is, this is a fantasy used to make equations balance out. So, and here's Nikola Tesla's quote on these type of idiots. This is from Tesla. The scientists of today think deeply rather than clearly. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. Very true. 
There is fundamentally, and let's get on to magnetism and leave these idiots behind, there is no fundamental action at a distance which apply, implies lack of interconnectivity since the field surrounding a magnet is ab extra to the magnet itself and only the pressure mediation of the medium or ether itself. The magnet does not have a field, rather impresses of the medium the field structure to be necessitated. This of course explains in simplex ether hysteresis, electromagnetic retardation, as well as countless other things in a simplex and logical fashion. To speak conventionally only about any magnetic pole is inept since there are palpable pressure zones by any Gauss meter or even the supercell. You can actually show the rate of flux but not the nature of flux. And we'll talk about that in the next few sections when we'll um, clearly il uh, illuminate what's uh, going on so that you have an understanding. This notion of, well, here's the North Pole and here's the South Pole doesn't work that way. It's high in the center so far as the pressure, then it tapers off, then increases to max at the edge, all of which is viewable underneath the supercell, all of which is palpable using bismuth, all of which is also measurable with a Gauss meter. So let's define magnetism here very soon. Suffice to say, there's no such nonsense as magnetic attraction, nor is said phenomena a force. Likewise, a magnet does not possess or have a magnetic field. Rather, itself carries with it the necessary pressure gradient that defines the incommensurability of point source field coherency, which it exhibits this neat field geometry that humans are so amused by. Magnetism is the dielectric field. Further still, a magnet does not have poles. This is an absurdity in the extreme. Since there are no Cartesian poles in any magnet, since you can take a magnet and slice it a million times like a log of cheese, and each slice will, of course, contain a north and a south pole. These pressure gradients require to one, grasp the, one to grasp the incommensurability and point non-specific pressure zones that define the magnetodielectric object we call the magnet. The same phenomenon is identical to the holographic paradigm, wherein which the whole is found within each and every part or section. As it happens, the most important secret of the Pythagoreans, by their own admission, was the understanding of the nature of incommensurability, or the Euristostias. This is uh, from a horismos, meaning without a horizon or line or location, or in the ancient Greek, topos. This is the attribute of the dielectric which follows a, a pressure gradient expressed by actually the native prohodos, or emanationism of the ether against itself, or its extrinsic attribute, which follows 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3, which is actually my discovery from Plato's Republic 509D to 511 on the divided line section and the incommensurability, the nature of the uh, cosmos nuitos, as it is mirrored within the cosmos nuitos, meaning, you know, the substrate cosmos, if you will, versus the phenomenal cosmos. This would be the distinction between the cosmos nuitos and the cosmos estitos. Um, so, by the way, a really neat video that anybody should watch, and you could uh, just uh, go to YouTube and find it. Just type in Richard Feynman on magnetism. There's like about 10 copies on YouTube, and he's sitting in a high back chair with his hands folded, and there's a simple British soul who says, well, what is magnetism? What is going on between these magnets? See, I, he's not trying to trap Feynman, and it's okay not to know the answer to stuff, but when you pretend to know stuff, and you, you know, start blathering out, uh, you know, vomitous nonsense and uh, fecal excrement, then you're a fool, and Richard Feynman is a fool. He squiggles, squiggles, squiggles and worms, in his chair like a frog on a hot plate and he eventually says uh, something really crazy about an old lady slipping on the ice and then he says well it's just too complicated for me to explain it to you I don't have a proper frame of reference well the answer Mr. Feynman is you haven't got a goddamn clue now this guy is heralded as the cult figure of GR and QM general relativity and quantum mechanics he is extremely he's dead now but he is an extremely suave fellow but also, at the same time, an idiot. It is okay to say, I don't know the answer to that, you know? Human science has not evolved to the point where we understand magnetism. Well, we do now. But uh, that is a very telling video, because if you look at the comments under these videos, of which there are, like I said, six copies on YouTube, just type in Richard Feynman on magnetism. You'll see all these general relativity and quantum mechanics idiots, and I do mean idiots in the absolute sense. Yeah, brilliant explanation, Mr. Feynman. Brilliant, brilliant. Everybody loves he didn't explain anything. He talked about two old ladies slipping on the ice. He never even began to define magnetism or what a magnet is. Because a magnet before becomes a magnet and after, there is zero quantitative change. 
So what defines a magnet? What is magnetism? Well, he doesn't know, nor does he even, there's no argument. He never even begins to explain it. But when you actually have some, this sort of cult following nonsense, and modern JGR and QM is a cult. Mind you, it is a cult. Its priests are PhD uh, uh, theoretical physicists, and uh, some are more famous than others. It is, a, it is a religion. It is a cult. It's not based upon uh, anything logical. And uh, it is insanity. It is a pack of very deep thinkers who are, as Tesla said, quite insane. Um, this is also interesting, and I'll leave the, this section here in the Department of Physics. This is University of Urbana-Champlain. Question is, basically, what defines magnetism? Blah, 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 nonsense, nonsense. Uh, electrostatic and magnetic fields involve the exchange of virtual photons. So this, children, is no different than saying, uh, someone asking, what is magnetism? And somebody with a PhD, doctor, doctoral degree, well, it's unicorns and leprechauns. They're invisible. We can't see them. They're not the inputs or outputs of any experiments, but they make our equations balance out. Virtual photons. If you are stupid enough to believe this crap, then you too are a fool. Undeniably so. Lux e veritas. If you like these videos, this is the second section of my lecture on magnetism. You can always uh, drop a buck or two below. Tell me to jump off a cliff. I'm happy to give this lecture because many people demanded it. And uh, we go into section 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 7. All of that is on defining magnet and magnetism, so bear with me in these first two sections. This is the second section ending my lecture on what a magnet is not and what magnetism is not, i.e. the current state or position on magnetism. Okay? Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the third section.